Hi everyone, I wanted to make a quick video here. As some of you guys noticed, there have been an update here on the Grand Arena, Grand Arena screen, including the edit defenses. On the edit defenses, it shows three versus three. So I wanted to go over uh, my, you know, my personally, my three versus three defenses, my three versus three offenses, and kind of miscellaneous teams that I'm looking at at this point. So there have been a lot of changes. I'm not quite sure when the next three versus three will be, but I've had a few people request this video, so wanted it out. Wanted to go ahead and make one. So let's go ahead and jump into it. I want to start with three versus three defenses. So uh, let's start with a couple of GLs. I don't have SLKR on this uh, on this account. So I've got every uh, GL except for SLKR. If I had SLKR on this account, I've got it on my other, my old account. Um, but if I had SLKR on this one, I would probably keep it for offense. But for defense, it's going to be Ray. Ray plus Hoda plus the armor. I'd say that's probably going to be one of the best defenses out there. Ray's Whirlwind, I'm sorry, Ray's uh, Ultimate. Uh, does damage, but it spreads the damage out over many tunes. So when there's fewer tunes, like in three versus three, it's going to do a lot more damage. And then when you add Hoda, which incre increases her offense there, and when you um, add Armor there, so Armor is going to so going to throw the, uh, the Signet her way, the best car Armor, and she's going to get more defense, more health, more protection, recovering protection, and of course if it gets three stacks, she's countering, and every time she counters. She's you know, doing a large amount of damage. It overall, this team here will be a you know it'll be hard to counter it unless without a JNK. There will be maybe some slackers that will be able to counter that team, but the banners will be in the forties. So it's going to be pretty low banners um, without a JNK. Now a gas can counter a ray. Gas versus ray that certainly can work. So if I was thrown in a corner and I was facing this team, this Ray Hoda and Armor team, this this three uh, this three team here, and I did not have JMK to use, I would probably use the gas. You know, I have another video that shows gas versus Ray in a three versus three situation. Um, I think it's like a low grade Ray team, like with Vet Han or something like that. Um, and it does work. It a little bit RNG dependent because you could, you know, you could, you know, Gas could sit down and then Ray does her ultimate or whirlwind and it basically destroys, you know, the other two surviving, um, uh, five or first clones. So it's a little bit RNG dependent, but it certainly can work. Clearly, the best team to take against that is JMK. Other than that, other than everything else is kind of J, uh, RNG dependent. So let's go to LV here. LV, I put Royal Guard and Thrawn down. Um, this team can no longer be countered by Bounty Hunters in 3 versus 3. For Bounty Hunters, you really need you need the full team. I mean, you need Finnick there. You need uh, Bosk there. You need... Uh, you definitely need um, uh, uh, Mandalorian there and Grief Cart. I mean, you need every single one. You need uh, Zam's Omi. I mean, th without all five of them there, they can no longer counter a Lord Vader. They can't get it up, so to speak. So for this Lord Vader, I would probably say there's a decent chance that Gas could do some damage here. But you're definitely going to need Arc. And you're definitely going to need Rex. Without fives there, I can't. It's certainly possible, but I can't really see. Because when five sacrifices, it really gets you the offense up to get through Lord Vader's healing. And without that, uh, it'd be tough. So clearly with JMK, you could beat that team. Also, SLKR, and that's why if I had SLKR on this account, I'd probably keep it for offense, because knowing that the SLKR could take this team down relatively easily, you don't have 
you don't have uh, the four team, the you know the four spaces that you need to throw the night sister in. So I'd probably throw in like Sith Imperial Trooper or something like that. Some type some type of pre taunt that is able to soak up Thrawn's fracture ability. Um, but other than that, Esikar would take it. It would be low banners, unfortunately. Um, but JNK would be obviously very easy. This next team here, getting away from the GLs on defense, you know, I'm putting on DR. I'm taking away a Malik. Obviously, Malik is, you know, that three team would be a three team made in heaven. <laughs> but I'm taking away Malik to use on offense. Um, the Darth Revan, the Basta, as they start to move, it would be tough for the Imperial Troopers to beat a Darth Revan team. Certainly possible, but you would need to get ahead of them and kill somebody relatively quickly. It's hard to do that with only three Imperial Troopers. You, you know, might not have the damage to do it. Um, so basically gas. Gas would come in and take a Darth Revan team down. You could do it, you know, with, for example, a Qui-Gon Jinn Anakin. So if I was facing this team, I would probably use the Qui-Gon Jinn Anakin simply because they would just blow them up. You know, and again, to come in and just kill everybody. But uh, the get in here is there, uh, obviously, to pull Termeter back. It's going to be his second move that he does that with. So, for those who are familiar with that, you know, Darth Revan goes, Basilisk goes, they throw fear on the enemies, on the enemy team, and then Moff getting, hopefully, in his second move, will then pull Termeter back. So, that's the goal there. When you add Gideon there, um, it does make gas teams harder to counter this team. Uh, you're going to get armor shred on gas, and so he's going to fall down quicker. And with gas only having two 501st, it will make it a little bit harder. Not impossible, but just harder. So this next team, now that we're you know through really the big teams here, we're going to go a little quicker uh, for... Uh, CLS, and this one's been around for a while, and as I was looking at it, it's still a pretty decent team. There are a couple of Omicrons out there, for example, on, um, on Leia, that could maybe add something to this, but I don't want to really experiment with that, because this team, I really don't want to break up. It's, it's a good defensive team, for sure. Good banner stealer, you know, B1, B2, it's been around forever. Um, a lot of things take it down. It's very much of, you know, it's very much a filler team at this point because there's so many things that can take it down, including Night Sisters. But it's a good it's a good banner stealer. Even Night Sisters that can quite easily take this team down, you're still gonna be there with fifty or fifty one banners. And that's that's good when you're trying to, you know, banner snipe basically. And taking away three or four banners is is good. So good banner stealer team there with Grievous. This new gunray Django L three, unless the enemy has a Malik soloing or a Jedi Knight Revan team, which is probably you know probably there, that team will cause some migraines. It will cause some headaches there for the enemy. So I like that new team. I usually put it down almost every time. And it's you know got a couple of holds, so it's been a, been a nice team win. L three, you know it's you can't you know you tag Newt, he's going to go in stealth. Django obviously with the separatist leader is immune to damage, and L three is going to be pretty beefy. So it's a tough team to get through. A good filler teams here. Uh, we got the Finn with uh, Hero Boys with Hero Twins. Um, a decent team. Um, if you have, you know, Imperial Troopers, CLS, Jedi Revan, even, you could get through this team. So I say it's a high grade filler team. You know, certainly going on defense for me. Um, putting Shock T, Arc Trooper, and Rex, I use this version of the Shock T lead 501st because it's anti Malik. It doesn't do a lot. You know, it doesn't really help with the other counters to a shock leading three team, except for with the Malik team. So this can usually cause a timeout issue with Malik. So that's the reason I put it down. So anybody trying to take a Malik against this has a risk of a timeout. It's not all the time, but I think looking at SWGOH.GG, it's like 55% of the time it, it 
works and 45% of the time or something like that. It's it's good enough to put it on defense. Good filler teams here at the end. You know, Hux, I just, you know, again, I don't have SOPR, so I'm just now getting my uh, first order team up and running. Frankly, if I had Red Trooper, I would put him down instead of, instead of probably Kylo. Um, so Hux, Red, and Stor- First Order Stormtrooper would probably be the next that I would go with. And then maybe do like a crew leading, leading team or something. Um, but I don't have Red, so I don't put that down. And between a Hux lead or a Kylo, you know, Kylo Ren, a crew, a crew lead, looking at the data, it really is pretty much the same. So it really doesn't really matter too much. I prefer Hux simply because I like the counters that they do. Um, I think that would probably maybe steal a little bit more banners, to be honest. Uh, so this Dooku team, definitely a filler team. Um, right now, I've got my Droidica very, very fast. So I've got them at plus 162 speed. Uh, that is simply because I... And putting them with my multi on a five versus five multi. Obviously, that's not going to work here. So, um, come three versus three, I'm going to basically switch the mods between Dooku and Droidica. And so, Dooku is going to have plus 162 instead of 112. So, he will be very, very speedy. There are plenty of counters to that, but when you have a fast Dooku, his first move is to stealth everybody. Except for Mandigard. Mandigard is, is going to be taunting. So once Mandigard is basically the only one there, basically the purpose is, is to go Droidica slow. So he hits harder. And you know hopefully you get maybe one good shot off with the Droidica to maybe kill somebody or take a banner or two away. So that's basically what you're trying to do there. Filler team, of course. You know, you got Darth Maul, Sidious, Marauder. I don't have... Uh, Darth Maul's Zeta. Um, it's kind of on a to-do list. Certainly would love to have it. I just don't have a, again SLKR, so I need to save my Zetas up here. Uh, that would obviously, this team would obviously be better with the Zeta. A couple experimental teams. Um, I've got Leia's Omicron. <laughs> probably the one I regret the most. Um, I probably should have put it on Akbar if anybody. Uh, Akbar is technically my next one. But uh, I'm going to see how this goes. I'll maybe put it on defense for a few times and see what it can do. Iden. So Iden, uh, you know, really needs a full team <laughs> to really do anything on on defense or offense. Um, there's really no damage here. You know, you got Iden, Shore Trooper, Death Trooper. They're really not going to hit very hard. And so you're hoping, you're hoping for a timeout. So putting it on defense is what, what I'm going to be doing, and I'm hoping that basically looking for a timeout. You know, they, you got to kill Shore Trooper, Death Trooper before you can kill Aiden, unless of course you use things like Sith Trio with Nihilus or with Mando and his and his Nihilite. Those things get around that. So if I was taking this team out, I would probably use Sith Trio. You know, I think Sith Trio by themselves, those three versus these three, would work pretty well. You know, it's, there's no damage enough to go out and kill, assuming you've got, you know, Relic for Relic match here. There's really not enough damage there to kill the Sith Trio team. So that's probably the team that I would use. So going over to offense here, um, those are 13 teams for defense. I've got 13 teams for offense. Obviously, you need 15 on D, and you need 15, at least 15 for offense. So I've got 13 for sure. Or not 13 for sure, but 13 good defensive teams and 13 good offensive teams. And then I've got about nine. You, know, you can go either way. So offensive teams, I like the Bastila leading the, the, the Luke the Luke guys. Um I don't know the 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 protection up. I can see that giving me a little bit more a little bit more room for banners. So it's not really going to kill much, frankly. JML in three versus three is definitely the weakest GL in three versus three. You really need the full team. I mean, JML can no longer take a JMK out 
without Jedi Knight Revan, Jedi Knight Luke, Y. I mean, you, you, you need all these things. You need all these people to, to take a Jinx out, so that's not going to work. And frankly, you really, you probably could take a Ray down, but it would probably be a weak Ray. You know? So, you know, JML, definitely the weakest. And so that leads a lot of people to put him on defense with Bass the lead, which is a good, you know, it's certainly good. But be aware that gas can counter that. Gas can take down fast leading GML. So, and of course, SLKR too. And let's see. <laughs> so, uh, so I usually for offense try to take a B team down, you know, maybe a high grade B team. Maybe if it's a weak Darth Revan team, that's basically what I'm looking for. So here's my C team. I'm using Watt on offense. I played around with Watt on defense in five versus five. I think when you get to, you know, a certain lack of power, you can kind of play around with that. But frankly, with three versus three, to have C on offense, you need Watt. You need Watt for many things. And to be able to counter Ray with C, you definitely need Watt. So do keep that in mind that if you're thinking about Watt on defense or offense, I would certainly say offense. So Wampa, Wampa Omicron, uh, this is probably going to be one of the most powerful teams for three versus three. I can only imagine all the teams that he's able to take down in three versus three. Uh, you know, in five versus, he's taking five, you know, he's making, taking five tunes down and he's able to, you know, stay alive with five tunes stacking him. I can only imagine three, only three hitting him. He could probably take down most B, probably some A. I would certainly say he could probably take down, you know, maybe even a GL or something, depending on the GL. So it, it'd be interesting to see, you know, testing a little bit with Womp and 3 versus 3 would be interesting. Uh, there's the Malik Solo. Solo's many things. I like getting, I think, the max score in, um, I think the max score in, Three versus three is going to be like 58 or 59 or something. So I like getting 58, 59 banners. So that's why I bring him along. Bosk leading Grief and Mando. This is a just a general, very decent team. Um, yeah, it beats a lot of things. So I'm keep certainly taking it down. Revan, I mean, it's universally. It takes down quite a, quite a bit of things. And I think that's really a general strategy here is for on the offense side, you want to bring a lot of teams down that can counter four or five things. So it gives you a lot of flexibility on offense. Um, you know, for example, Palpatine, Vader, and Mare Jade, that team could take down a lot of the more annoying teams like Geos and Mon Mothmas, any team that, you know, you, you need to get ahead of. And Vader can usually get ahead of those teams and beat them. Just him. Sith Trio certainly takes those in offense. You know, it's it's a good team on defense, um, but I think with just taking that dashes and the geos and the, some weaker Mon Moth, you know, maybe even stronger Mon Moth was in three versus three, that it's just nice to have as, as a backup when you need it. Um, Night Sisters, I would say they're too weak to put on defense on three versus three with only three of them there. Um, certainly when you're on a higher GP level, so take it down to Grievous. Even though it's low banners, frankly, if you need to take down Grievous and you don't want to waste a Genite Revan or, you know, a Mon Mothma or something, then, or Bam, then, yes, yeah, taking a 50, 51, taking a three or four banner hit might be the thing that you need to get through Grievous. Definitely in Pro Troopers, I mean, taking them on offense, they beat almost anything so you know as a reminder this goes to me as well i keep my gideon as a high speed as you know he's the highest speed in pre trooper that i have and i need to reverse that in terms of keeping the p at the highest speed in three versus three he's relatively fast you know 324 but i think i've got my gideon like plus 20 speed more or something like that. So he's certainly faster. I just need to switch those mods around, get Piet up to 340 range, so he's able to outspeed most things with um, Veers giving him 20 more. Um, again, you know, SLKR, I'm working on SLKR, so I got a couple first order tunes at this point, including OG Kylo here. At this level, you really don't see anybody putting cars through Ewoks. 
on defense, but if they do, I'll take another. I'll take another. Um, I'll take another solo here. We've got uh, Bad Batch, and we've got Jedi uh, Jedi Training Ray here. Red Eight Ray Jedi Training. Everybody say that. And I think these are also very good universally. Um, I all I like taking the JTR against the CLS team on defense. Uh, you do have to be a little cautious that if um, through through PO or two PO or however you say that uh, he's got good and high tenacity, that could be a problem for you. But you know, a JTR is is a perfectly good team as the health and unity can beat and can minimize some of these other teams that rely on, you know, recovering health. So I like keeping, you know, Bad Batch and Jedi Training Ray on offense. Lastly, let's go into the nine teams here that can go really, in my, in my opinion, either way. And uh, let's start with the GL here. It's J&K. Either way, to be honest, I mean, you know, it depends on preference, but I prefer this to be more offense. That's more personal, I would say. Uh, I usually face, at my level, I usually face people who have all six GLs, and so they'll load GLs on defense. So I like to keep the extra J&K as, as you know, insurance here. You know, general uh, gas, echo, and fives, you know, this is a, a very, very tough team to beat. Um, with echo and fives there, they have a lot of, uh, they sync up a little bit uh, in terms of echo getting a lot more offense up or defense up uh, with fives there, and it's tough to beat. Certainly with the changes, it's even even harder to beat. But, you know, with gas, echo, and fives, it would probably take a C to take that down. You know, if you try to take a CLS, it's not going to work. You need all five hitting the clones to knock them down before gas stands back up. And with only two, three hitting them, it's not going to be enough. So, CLS not going to work. A mirror match, frankly, it would probably be a timeout. You're probably not going to be able to knock him down fast enough to to get gas by himself. He'll probably you'll probably be able to kill fives, and then gas is going to stand up again. And you kill Echo, and gas is going to stand up again. And I think by that point, it's going to be a timeout. So it's going to be that's a good defense, and it'll probably be on defense for me. Maul. So Maul is probably offense. It's really a shame that without a full team of Mandalorians for Maul, it won't really work out for you. For example, this team here, Bokatan and Kando, Candy, can be taken down by Citra. I mean, fairly easily and decent of banners. So it's just a good team for good offense. Take something down. Maybe something that like uh, has a Kenobi or something in it. Probably defense for Finnick Shan. I want to see, I've got the Zam Omicron, so I want to see how that goes. The reason why I want Finnick leading here is because when you're reading her leadership, it's, oops, that's unique. Her leadership, it says at the start of battle, she gets 100% health, protection, defense, and offense, and these numbers are reduced 25% for each other ally. I was saying with three versus three, that still means a 50% increase in max health, max protection, defense, and offense. And with, you know, my Finnick at 12, 12, 8 special offense, I'll take another 50% offense. I'm curious to see, you know, she's hitting 19,000 offense. I'm curious to see what teams can do uh, against that. I considered putting, instead of Sion and Django here, taking Sion and Django out, putting Bosk in, and then maybe putting Aura leading the grief in Mando. I may still do that. I've been considering it. I think Finnick Sean with Bosk here, with Bosk tanking, I think that would be a, a deadly, deadly match. I think that would be tough to get through. Certainly, certainly with Zam's Omicron also boosting everybody up by 60% um, of her protection offense and all that stuff. Yeah, I, I'm truly considering it. You know, I, I don't need Bosk leading grief in Mando. Mando, I think Aura is perfectly fine i think what team would reduce that from killing is probably it's probably grievous teams i, I don't think aura is going to be able to get off enough hits to get her leadership to take down 
uh, grieve at some time. So I've been kind of considering it. And then maybe like sign of Django, taking him and leading uh, a couple scoundrels or something on defense. Um, I think I've got IG-11 and Queel still left because I put Bam with that team right there. Bam with Han and Chewie. Um, so on defense, most likely Padme, GK, and Ranker. Um, <laughs> really, I don't expect much from this team. Maybe it gets a little bit annoying. I certainly wouldn't take them on offense. I don't see how this team could take anything down. You know, I've got Qui-Gon Jinn. I'm sorry, i got Anakin off somewhere else. i got Snips off to somewhere else. So it's really, I'm kind of... I didn't have many Galactic Republic left to use there. Um, certainly a filler team for defense. Offense, uh, Beskar, Han, and Chewie. Um, this could go on defense as well. It certainly is annoying on defense. For the leadership, he's actually he's adding a little bit of health, a little bit of protection, a little bit of offense, but it's the 2% true meter that I'm hoping to get that when they hit one, two, three, four times, they're getting 8% true meter each for Han and Chewie. So that's the purpose there. It's nice. It would be nice to get a little bit extra protection in health and offense, but it's the true meter game that I'm hoping that helps there. And I'm probably going to keep them on offense. Having Han and Chewie there hitting first in the beginning of battle is, frankly, just too too valuable to leave on defense, in my opinion. Um, I've got Qui-Gon Jinn, Anakin, and Cam as probably Alden's. And this team, this team could take probably on three versus three. It could probably take any team out. That's not a GL, to be honest. I'm trying to think of like what other, what team could possibly not this kill. Anything that, um, any, maybe the CLS it would have a problem with because the through PO, two PO, or you want to say it, you know, it's going to push some, some misses over at Anakin. So there may be a few teams there, but certainly keeping him offense as an emergency. They kill Qui-Gon Jinn, Anakin gets angry, hits everyone, kills everyone. That's you know, that's still there in that this three team is what I use in three versus five. It's still effective, even more effective in three versus three. Probably defense for the Mon Mothma. Again, Kyle Katan is getting I think it's ten percent turn meter. 10% training for each other rebel fighter ally. That's not great anymore because there's only one other rebel fighter ally here because Mount Mothma is a rebel fighter and Kalkatan doesn't count himself. So he's only getting a 10% true meter instead of a 30% true meter. So he's certainly been dumbed down quite a bit. And for that reason, I would say this is probably a filler team. Do not, I would rely on this as a key defensive team. As him going so much slower, there will be a lot more teams that will be able to take him down. Um, so, you know, still be, still be good. If you have him offense, you know, offense and speed, he could still do some damage, certainly if he still goes first. Uh, probably offense for the Geos. I think it's just a very nice way to, you know, have either a cleanup of some sort or, frankly, just taking down a good B team. You know, if someone puts crew on defense, this team beat crew team and get full banners. So it's just, you know, geos are nice to have, in my opinion. So hopefully this uh, video was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Appreciate it.